Hi, Mathies. We're going to start our third unit, probability, uh, lesson number one, and we're just going to go over some terminology. I won't go through every definition. I'll just kind of highlight a few of the important ones. So I want to talk to you, first of all, about sample space. So sample space is the total number of possible outcomes in an experiment. So for example, I could have flipping a coin and rolling a die and list out all of the possible outcomes. Sometimes we want to list them out, but sometimes we just want to know how many outcomes there are, and that's where the fundamental counting principle is really going to help us. Now within the sample space, each one of those elements is an event, and it could be one, could be more than one outcomes of an experiment. So for example, an event could be something like heads, or rolling a one and rolling a four, or flipping a coin, landing on tails, and rolling a two. Events are parts or subsets of a sample space. When we're talking about probability, we denote it with a capital P. So that P stands for probability. And in the inside of the brackets, that is the event. So in this case, it would be event A. So we want to find the probability of event A. That's how we would write it. Now, probabilities are numbers between 0 and 1. 0 being impossible, 1 being absolutely certain. So an example of something that would have 0 probability would be rolling a 9 on a standard 6-sided die, because there is no 9. Whereas a probability of 1 would be, I have a 100% chance of rolling a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 on a die. So your probability is going to be numbers in between there, and we can write them as fractions, decimals, or percents. So for example, I could say something has a 1 out of 4 probability, 0 0.25 probability, or a 25% probability. So those are all the different ways that we can write probabilities. To figure out a probability, we look at the total number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of possible outcomes. And that total is just how many outcomes there are in a sample space. So let's look at an example. Let's say we have a die and it's a fair die. We roll it and we're looking at getting a one. So first of all, listing out the sample space, any one of the six sides of a die. That would be your sample space, one, two, three, four, five, or six. The favorable outcomes in the sample space would be the event of rolling a one. So it would just be that one. Now, in order for us to use that formula for probability, number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes, we have to make sure that all the events are equally likely. And in this case, yes, all the outcomes are equally likely because it is a fair die. Fair die means six sides, one number on each side. So every number has an equal chance of being rolled. So to figure out the probability of the event, I look at the total number of outcomes in the sample space divided by the total numbers in the event, which is one. And this just means that one side is the number one. There we go. This means the total number of sides. So I don't want you to think that because these are ones that they match, that's just a coincidence. For example, if I wanted to look at the probability of rolling a four on a die, it would not equal to four out of six. The probability of rolling a four would be the one side that's a four out of a total of six sides. So just so we're clear on why that is. Now let's look at, say we have a spinner and it's split into four equal sections. And I spin it, I want to know the event or the probability that it lands on hearts. So I'm actually just going to jump down here. Are all the outcomes equally likely? And yes, they are because it is four equal sections, which means I can use my probability formula. So let's list out the sample space. The sample space is going to be one of each of these sections. So the sample space could be spades, diamonds, hearts, or clubs. The number of favorable outcomes is just rolling the heart, or sorry, spinning the heart. So the probability of the event is how many hearts there are, one, out of how many sections there are, four. Okay. Complementary events. We can use that last example to explain what a complementary event is. If I go back to this spinner, I can either 
spin a heart or not spin a heart. Those are all possible outcomes. So it can either be hearts or not hearts. So if we go back over here, the probability of a heart was one out of four. The probability of not heart or heart complement would be three out of four. So I know intuitively that these are complementary events because it makes sense. Either I get a heart or I don't. But I can also tell that they are complementary events because when I add them together, I get one. And one means 100% or all of the possible outcomes. So heart or not heart adds to one. Therefore, those two events are complementary events. So what we can say is the probability of A plus the probability of not A or A complement equals to one if the events are complementary. So let's use that. So we're looking at the event of rolling a one. So either on a die we can roll a one or we don't roll a one. Those are the only two choices. So listing out the events here, rolling a one, there's just one way of doing that out of six sides on a die. Not rolling a one would mean rolling a two, three, four, five, or six. So five of those out of six. So we can do it that way or using complementary events, say that the probability of not rolling a one is equal to one minus the probability of rolling a one. So one minus one out of six is five out of six. So two different ways that you can approach that question. Okay, so now we're gonna look at compound events, which just means a combination of simple events. So here's an example. We're gonna look at two ways of solving that. So let's say we have two coins that are tossed and we record the number of heads. And I wanna know what is the probability of flipping two coins and landing on two heads. So Tyler says, okay, I can get two heads, one head, one tail, or two tails. I'm interested in getting just two heads. So since there are three outcomes in the sample space, only one of those is getting two heads. He says that the probability of getting two heads is one out of three. So from what he said, that makes sense. However, he did make a mistake and that mistake was in the sample space. The sample space does not have three outcomes. When I flip two coins, I don't have three outcomes. I actually have four. Two outcomes on the first and two outcomes on the second is four. So you can see there are actually two ways of getting one head, one tail because it didn't specify the order. Let's look at another way. I could list it out using a tree diagram. So I can say the first coin has options of heads or tail and the second coin also has options of heads or tails. Each branch is a different outcome. And you can see all together, there are four outcomes. So let's use these probabilities or this tree diagram to figure out some probabilities. Okay, looking at all of the outcomes, I wanna know what is the probability of flipping a coin and it landing on two heads? So first of all, for each one of these, I'm going to put it out of four, which is the number of items in the sample space. To figure out the numerator, I'm just gonna look at the events. So I'm looking at two heads. There's only one way of getting two heads. So the probability of that, one out of four. Let's look at the probability of getting two tails. There is only one way of getting two tails, so that probability is one out of four. And then lastly, let's look at getting one head, one tail, not specific in order. So I can see that there are two ways out of four, which in lowest terms is a half. Always put your probabilities in lowest terms. Okay, so let's try this idea, but this time we're gonna add a spinner onto the mix. So we're gonna do two coins and we're gonna add on a spinner. So first of all, I wanna determine how many outcomes I'm going to have before I start listing them out. So using the fundamental counting principle, I can say there's three outcomes on the spinner, two outcomes on the coin, two outcomes on that coin. All together, there should be 12 outcomes. So looking at all my outcomes on a tree diagram, every outcome gets its own branch. 
So I have spinner, coin one, and coin two. So you can see for spinner, I have three different outcomes. For coin one, with the one on the spinner, I could get heads or tails. And then on, if I got a two, I would get heads or tails and so on. So let's say I get a one and a head, that branches out to heads and tails. A one and a tail, that branches out to heads and tails. So I keep branching out as I go. So this would be what all of the outcomes look like. And I can see by counting that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, as I expected, twelve outcomes. So are all the outcomes equally likely? Well, the spinner is made by equally spaced sections. The coin is fair, being that it has a head and a tail. So since they have equal sections, equal chances of getting heads or tails, then yes, all the outcomes are equally likely. So let's use this tree diagram to come up with the answer to a couple probability questions. So for the first one, now again, I know that there are 12 outcomes, so right away I'm going to put the denominator as 12 for each one of these. Okay, let's look at the first one. So it says, what is the probability um, of spinning a spinner, flipping two coins, and getting the number three on the spinner and two heads. So three on the spinner and two heads. That would be the only way of doing that. So the outcome would be one out of 12. Okay, next one says, what is the probability of spinning the spinner at landing on a prime number and getting one tail? So looking at the numbers one, two, and three, 2 is prime, 3 is prime. Prime meaning it only has two factors of 1 in itself. The number 1 is neither prime nor composite. It is a neutral number. So 1 is not prime and it is not composite. It's considered a neutral number. So we're not going to look at anything for 1. So we're going to look at 2 and 3. So looking at 2 and 3, I'm looking at getting that with one tail. So here's 2 with one tail, here's 2 with one tail, here's 3 with one tail, and 3 with one tail. So altogether I can see I have 4 out of 12 outcomes, and then I put that into lowest terms, and I get 1 third. So always put your fractions in lowest terms for probability. Okay, the last example that I want to do with you guys is a table question. We've seen tree diagram, let's look at table. So let's say that we have a red die and a blue die and we roll them together. So all of these outcomes are going to be listed in the table. And for example, if I have the ordered pair three and four, that means three on the blue die and four on the red die. So we're just going to go in alphabetical order. So since I have two different sides of a die, I know that six choices on my first and six choices on my second die, I should have 36 different outcomes. So I'm going to list those all out here. Here are all the 36 outcomes of rolling two dies. Okay, so you can see I can, and I've even color coordinated them so you know which one's blue and which one is red. Now I can use a table because there's only two events, one for the row, one for the column. Anything more than two events, I have to use a tree diagram to list them out. Okay, so let's look at the first event. The event is that the same number appears on each die. So there's all the ways that I can have the same number on each die, also called doubles. So when I get the same number on each die, this is really just doubles. Okay, so let's say if I want to state the probability that I have the same number on each die. So there's all 36 outcomes and you can see the ones on the diagonal are having the same die. So listing that all together, same number again, meaning double, the probability of doubles would be 36 outcomes in total, six of them on the main diagonal being doubles. So to put that into lowest terms on your calculator or yourself, you can say that that is the same as one out of six in lowest terms. 
let's look at a different number appearing on each die. So on the 36 outcomes, I've highlighted in green all the ways that you have different numbers. So on the last one, we were looking at doubles, which are these. Now we're looking at different, which really means not doubles or double complement. So the probability of rolling a die and it not being a double, you can add up how many there are there. There are 30 out of 36 in total. And again, I always want to put these in lowest terms. And using my calculator, I can see that in lowest terms, that would be 5 out of 6. Now that's one way of doing the question. I want to show you how to do it in a different way. Okay, so in a different way, I'm looking at the probability of not rolling doubles. So doubles and not doubles are complementary events. Either you get a double or you don't get a double. So I can use what I know about complementary events to figure this out. The probability of not doubles would be 1 minus the probability of doubles. So that would be 1 minus, we already figured out the way of getting doubles, is 6 out of 36. So I can put that into my calculator, or even in lowest terms, I can go 1 divided, or sorry, take away 1 out of 6. Either way would work, and you would get 5 out of 6. So like I said before, if one event is easier to calculate than the other, as in the doubles, you can use complementary events and the probability of complementary events to calculate. So to summarize, sample space is all possible events or outcomes of an event. The number of items in the sample space will be in the denominator. Tables are good for two events. Tree diagrams are good for any number of events. And the probability is always the way, the number of ways that something happens divided by the ways that it doesn't happen. It can be a number between 0 and 1 as a fraction, decimal, or a percent. And always look for those little shortcuts. Sometimes it's easier to calculate the complement of event than it is the actual event. But probability itself is a really interesting topic and it's always really fun because probability means never having to say you're certain. I want you guys to work on practice questions number 1 to 11. All my detailed solutions are on D2L. And that concludes our introductory lesson to probability.